most firms are operated as partnerships where one or two or three people, some number of people get together and they have some agreement to share work and to share some staff and some office space. And each partner is responsible for something, bringing in his or her work or some piece of the business. And uh, HOK was founded differently because our founder, George Helmuth, the H of HOK, and he's the guy in the behind the H in the front cover. If you can right. See. Yeah. George Helmuth was um, the son of an architect. He grew up in St. Louis, Missouri in the early 1900s. And his father and his uncle had a practice there um, called naturally Helmuth and Helmuth. That's how both firms are named after the, after the, uh, and it was a partnership. And the two brothers, the two Helmuth brothers, his father and his uncle, didn't actually get along that well. Each one wanted to design his own work. And uh, so they both marketed for work. And when one, one, when one brother or the other won the work, that was the brother that got to design it. And the other one had to help by doing the, the construction documents and so on. But they hired some draftsmen. There was all men in those days. This was uh, early 1900s. It was 100 years ago plus. And um, they didn't think too much about marketing. They just loved to design and deliver the work. And the project would, about the time the project would be complete, they would have a well-trained staff of draftsmen. And then there would be no new work. And what would they do? They'd lay off all the draft yep. and start over again down to the two brothers. So young George Helma saw this as a boy growing up and he, he they, they weren't poor, but he said he remembers it was time of plenty and times of belt tightening in his family. He described it as a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. Helmuth graduated from, from uh, college uh, with a master of architecture degree in 1930. You know what happened then? The Great there was, Depression. There was a Great Depression, yeah. Great Depression lasted 10 years until World War II. George Helmuth, the first 10 years of his practice, he ended up landing a job at the city of St. Louis as a junior architect designing uh, public toilets and bus stops. And he did that for six long years. And each year he would go back and ask his father and his uncle if they could take him on as a partner. And they didn't have the work. So we finally left and, and, and actually left St. Louis, went to Detroit. Again, very long story. But he came up with... Uh, four principles for what he called a depression-proof firm. And, and uh, here they are in, in short. The first principle is, and if you're a firm owner, you should listen to this. Or, or you can buy my book and read it. <laughs> Both, hopefully. First principle is the people in your firm are the most important assets you have. Uh, because they ex they extend the owner's or the principal's uh, reach and allow the, the, the principal to do more with the people that work for him or her. And so you should attract and do your best to keep the people that are working for you. You should, you should attract the best you can and then take the time and put the energy in to train them how to do the work properly and how to work as a team. That was his first overarching principle. Second principle, because you have to keep people, that means you can't ride the roller coaster boom and bust. What do you do? He, and we think he was the first one in the country to do this. He said, you need to have a full-time marketing program run by a person that uh, is constantly looking for work. And that should be backed up by uh, a first-rate public relations program to establish the name or the reputation of the firm in its marketplace. Instead of having to just do it one client at a time, find ways to get your name out there. And uh, so full-time marketing, and he described full-time marketing as, as uh, farming. He said, you can't just go out and get a job in a, in a month or two. You have to first till the soil, that is cultivate your clients, then plant the seeds, and then till the fields, tend the fields, 
until finally you can harvest the results, which is to get work from your clients. And he said that process from start to finish can easily be five years. Well, you have to have a long vision about things if you're looking at five years out to win a client in a project. So, um, so that was the second principle. Third principle, the firm should, that's, that again, to, to avoid the boom and bust, the firm needs to be as diversified as possible in the work that it does. Everybody in the world was doing, when, when HOK started in the 50s, 1955, uh, all the firms in the country were doing schools. Why? Because there was a World War II, post-World War II baby boom, and there were lots of baby, lots of children in schools. And the baby boom went right up the, first there was a boom in grade school construction, and then in high school construction. When I joined HOK, there was a boom in college construction. Helmuth saw, unlike many other firms, many other architects, that boom is gonna go bust. When the baby, when the baby boom finishes, people won't need so many schools. And by then he wanted to, to have HOK engaged in designing anything else except schools, airport, prison, uh, hospitals, and on and on, a list of research laboratories, as long a list as you can imagine. So the idea of being diverse in what you can design was important to Helmuth, and he, he spent full time while the firm was busy doing schools in the 50s, cultivating clients in airports, uh, uh, hospitals, and so on. Um, he also said diversity should extend geographically. Uh, the firm HOK was founded in St. Louis, which is in the middle of the country. That's a relatively small city. And he said, I want to be able to keep my staff here in St. Louis busy, even if the economy in St. Louis is slow. And so why don't we start a new branch someplace and get work there and that might have enough work to keep the St. Louis staff busy. That was that is what brought me to San Francisco. Uh, when the firm was, uh, I joined the HOK when I was 12 years old, just one firm in one office in St. Louis, Missouri. And three years later, I was given a plane ticket to come to San Francisco and help open a brand new branch, uh, the first branch office. And I had never been west of Denver. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the firm began a geographic expansion that hasn't stopped. And now uh, the firm has, uh, again, 11 major offices, but 27 locations. And uh, the diversification of the work of the firm is still, is still unfolding, is still going on following that same principle. And he also said, in, a, in addition to building type diversification and geographic diversification, a good firm should look for service type diversification. People don't always just need an architect. Sometimes they need a landscape architect, mm -hmm. an interior designer, a planner, a programmer, uh, or a specialized consultant. So HOK now has all of that because the firm continued to invest in that continuously right. every year. Goes right back to cash. If you don't have the money, you can't do it. But if you, if you, earn a decent profit and collect it, and then don't give it all away to yourselves as bonuses. Give a lot of it away to yourself and your staff, but keep some and reinvest it in, in expanding or, or diversifying your business. So principle three, the diversification is a big one. Again, especially right now, on attracting and keeping good people. I spent 50 years at HOK. I'm the poster child for attracting and keeping. I had no intention of staying at HOK for my career. Huh. I thought, I'm going to work here a couple of years, get, I'll learn something, I'll get registered, and then I'll go out maybe California or someplace and become the next Frank Lloyd Wright. And 50 years, every Five time decades. I got a itchy foot, HOK gave me a new opportunity because it was growing and expanding. So the fourth principle, really important also, he had seen his father and his uncle compete or who was going to get to design the next work and so on. And he came up with this idea of, of having specialized leaders. Um, he wanted to be the, the leader, the partner, the principal in charge of marketing. 
he said, I'm a good designer. I've designed good buildings, but I know there are better designers than I that are talking about Helmut. Let me find the best designer I can that became Gio Obata, Japanese American from San Francisco. Uh, Gio Obata and, and, and my job would be to feed Gio Obata with new clients and new work. And uh, Gio would design, I would market. And then he found George Kassebaum. George Kassebaum was a very, uh, he was the architect's architect in terms of, he knew how to do anything. Uh, he was a super organized man. And uh, he knew he, he somehow, even though he went, he went through a school, he even taught uh, architecture at Washington University in St. Louis. He knew how to organize things. And he knew something about business. So George Kassbaum became the, the production leader of HOK in charge of getting the working drawings out, making sure that construction services are handled properly. But he also managed the firm. He made sure that we paid the rent and we, he had the relationship with the bank and so on. So, so the, the fourth principle again was specialized leaders so that and Helma said, you know, if you do something every day and focus on it, you get pretty good at it. So you don't have to just do something a little bit because you'll never you'll never get really good at it. Uh, so that was his fourth principle. This is not for every firm. Some people don't want to grow into big giant firms. But if you don't, if you but the principle, the, the principle is the same. If you have a small firm, you still need to do all of those things. You still need to market and design and produce the work and uh, manage the business and manage, tend to cash flow and so on. If you're extremely able, you can do it yourself. I, I think I've met in the course of my life, maybe one person that could do that. Most people need help with that. Right. That's when you get partners or other people in your firm that get pieces of that responsibility. But all of those have to be done. And again, don't forget the four support um, talents that you need again, uh, accounting, uh, IT, HR, and legal, and you either have to have to either have to get them with consultants or or get them in house, one or the other. You can't just ignore it. Those are the bones of what it takes to get a firm that can survive and prosper, no matter what's going on. And as these boom and busts, I again, I at HOK in my fifty years. I saw four or five uh, difficult times financially, economically, or 9-11, which was caused just by fear. Right. And uh, the typical HOK growth pattern was to grow, grow when times were normal, kind of level off when times were difficult, and then to grow again. So it was a stair step instead of a up and down. Right. Uh, and, and that's, I think that's ideal because if you don't do that, how do you keep your firm intact and take care of your people? That's right. How do you provide great service, great design service to your clients if you're always struggling on the ed, on the knife edge of, of uh, the abyss and where you can't stay in business? Right. So, um, Zach, you've been very kind and let me just uh, <laughs> ramble on here. That was that was amazing. There's so much to unpack there. We can't even. <laughs> I'm not even going to try this time.